Thank you both. And I want everyone, you can unmute for a moment and give a round of applause to Vaughn George and welcome Vaughn Harris. Yeah. A round of applause. Yay. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thank you, Vaughn. Thank you, Vaughn. Thank you, Vaughn. Cheers, Vaughn. Welcome, Vaughn. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. How's everyone doing? Are we all right? Fantastic. Yeah. Good, good. Hi, Bon. Chicago says hi. Well, hey, Mr. Birdwell. Hi. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Okay. If you look around, um, the other boys from Nights Are Ever also here. I just yeah. saw them. That my screen's going crazy, but uh, right. David and David and Simon, I believe, they are also on. Hey, Simon, I see you. Bonjour, Mr. Grandjean. Hello. Can you hear All me? Right. Yes. Not off. Right, good. Looking all craft work robotic over there. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Deep, cheeky little fella. Well, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Good Day. Give me in there. Yeah, hey, there he is. Yeah. It's it, this is uh, it's an Essex global takeover. It seems oh. to be. Excellent. We like it. We do. Yeah. So it's been, uh, how long has it been since we had Bon and then Simon and, and David on? It's been a couple months, right? Yeah, I'm Bond yeah. in December and, and David and Simon in January. Early January, yeah. yeah. yeah so, second, second of January. And those are excellent. Thanks, you guys, for doing Absolutely. that. Bon, what, you. Have you, what have you been up to since you were on our Zoom last time? Uh, mainly in the studio, actually. Yeah, a lot of studio work and a lot of writing music, um, an awful lot of writing music, and uh, attempting to prepare and finish up uh, lemon tree for an album um mixing that and doing additional overdubs so uh yeah but you know sort of taking a break from doing the the lemon tree concerts for a minute to try and get things finished in the studio yeah everybody's been asking if the lemon tree that the lemon tree episodes that mm. you had done for 2020 if they will be available in any they, shape they will yeah i'm working on the album now it's it's taken a little bit longer than expected I, I think everything is like in the midst of the pandemic is just trying to get people together from a distance and all that is always a bit of a challenge and uh yeah so uh sh slowly but surely we're getting there so uh, uh soon and are there any lemon trees coming up for 2021 are we going to be lucky in that sense uh we are yeah it's uh, i haven't really had time to think too much about I've got several ideas about what I'd like to do next. Um, uh, and some of it depends, you know, this some new material that I've been working on. If I can get that ready in time, then ideally that's what I'd like to start off with. But again, you know, everything's backed up a little bit. So I've got some sort of contingency plans just to, so it doesn't go too long um, before I do some kind of performance out there. Nice. And I know we've got some performance coming from you today. We a, have. Couple, a couple of songs, is it? Yeah, a couple of songs. Would you like to go ahead and, and give us one of them? Oh yeah, why not? Um, I've got a, uh, I've got a note to myself. I've got to stand up for one. So, mm -hmm. one second. It's a bit cramped over in this corner. <laughs> so uh, let me see. Um, I've got to turn my effects up. So here we go. There's one. Hey, 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 yeah, two, yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, I'm going to have to take my ears out, otherwise I'll get feedback. So um, here we go. If, if there's anything wrong, you'll have to gesture wildly in the picture because I won't be able to hear
Bon, you just missed all the applause because you couldn't hear us. But let's hear the give the applause again. One more Down time. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. As you as you as you know, we we all really really love that song anyway. But 
I don't know if you could see the comments. Maybe you could see them going by later. My, um, my eyes aren't that good. <laughs> <laughs> we love your version. Like we like the we like the original one, but this is an amazing, amazing version. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, well, thanks to you actually, Atuza, for requesting that I do it. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't super familiar with it to be honest, and uh, you know, and I had listened through, and I was like. You know, it it's kind of serves a purpose on that album. It's like up tempo and sort of does a thing. But you know, as I broke it down, I was like, I think there's an awful lot more in this, you know, than, than perhaps uh, is in that version, or at least a very different way of doing it. Absolutely, and my my choice for you actually singing it stemmed from listening to you cover songs under the lemon tree and hearing songs that I typically never really felt very close to but then once you interpreted it your way I felt very close to and in sympathy has always been one as we talked about like I like it but it never really did it for me and I always heard your voice on it ever since I got more familiar with your lemon tree versions and I thought oh he'd knock this out of the park well, so it's a good choice yeah and I wasn't you know like often when you sort of tackle a new thing the first first couple of run throughs I was like oh yeah not sure whether I'm going to hit this one, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, you have another cup of tea and think about it for a minute and then, uh, yeah, it all fell into place. And uh, it's really, I really enjoyed doing it, actually. It's oh, a brilliant. Beautiful song, yeah. Good. I'm glad I didn't feel like I was twisting your arm. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to somebody here. Um, Christian James Hand, are you here? Can you hear me? Christian. I am. Hello, Hi, Christian. Christian. Meet Bon. Hi, how's it going? Bon. Yeah. It's been a very long time. We actually, um, I interviewed you years ago at an internet portal where we had a studio on the top of a high rise on Sunset Strip. Yeah. Uh, which, which we spent $85 million in a year. It was fantastic and went out of business, <laughs> which was what a shock. But the first yeah. time we met was when you played the limelight in new york yeah. on the ebhead tour oh dear what's coming next it, it's not it's nothing that bad you had a you had a kitchen with a fully stocked uh chef and everything which was so opulent and amazing i might add yeah yeah, yeah full catering yeah that's why we were always broke we take, <laughs> like, full, full lights and catering on the road yeah, yeah it, it did a seem extravagant time. Yeah, we had a brilliant time for like three months. And then, and then it was for famine again, you know. It was, well, I'll tell you what, before the famine, we ate like kings and queens. It was amazing. Yeah. Hey, uh, and this was when uh, Julian was playing with you. Yeah. So the, so it was um, the, at Tony and uh, the guy that ran communion had like sort of drafted us in to be your roadies for the day. Right. To help offset the cost of the chef and the, the catering, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant local help for free, which yeah. we didn't mind. We'd love to do. And then Julian uh, convinced me to stage dive a number of times during the Limelight show <laughs> yeah. because he's like, we don't get stage divers because nobody thinks to do it. So yeah. will you stage dive for us? So I said, yeah, of course, not a problem. So I did it then. And then the following night, you played the Academy and he said, will you do the same thing tonight as uh, as you did the other night? And just stage dive a bunch of times. And I said, sure. I mean, a, a, a band sanctioned stage dive is always worth its weight in gold. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, we had a full meal catering still. So then uh, so I was at the side of the stage and Julian looks at me and he nods to indicate that now is the stage dive moment. And the thing that I hadn't calculated was I doubt whether you remember it, but the Academy stage was about the, the, the width of, the, of a football pitch. So I ran past you and you just sort of looked at me like, this doesn't end well, mate. And then I ran <laughs> and then, and then, and then I, I fucking, I hit this, the, the, which seemed to go on forever. So I just run in and run in and run in. And then I hit the monitors and I launched into the air. And uh, the, I believe that the physics is speed plus height equals length. So I went right over the pit, watched the pit go underneath me proceeded to fly completely over the pit, saw this little tiny goth chick who was standing at the back of the pit, landed on top of her, looked up at her friend who was, um, was, was a little larger than she was, who then proceeded to smile at me, 
put a Doc Martin onto my hand and then twist it, and I felt oh, all of the knuckles break across my entire hand. Fun times, man. Fun times. And then we spent the rest of the time in the backstage area icing my hand and partying. <laughs> I refused to give up the ghost until six o'clock the next morning when I was uh, in the emergency room getting it dealt with. But it was a. Uh, one of the greatest stage dives in the history of stage dives, courtesy of uh, Natsareb. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> wow, you're welcome. That's, a brilliant and, uh, night. Yeah, and that and that's why we don't stage dive anymore. <laughs> precisely, precisely. The limelight ones were beautiful. I think it's like 15 of them in a row, and then that just the yeah. once at the academy, just the once. Yeah. But that show was amazing. Yeah, yeah, fun days, fun days. But yeah. the, uh, the I think hopefully that hopefully no lasting damage on your hand. No, they were fine, but the, uh, the the doctor was like, how did you break all of the knuckles in your hand at the same time? And I, I had to make up a story about beating up a bunch of uh, muggers for an old lady instead of I had I got, I got them broken by a goth chick at a Knights of Reb show, just didn't yeah. seem to have the same sort of uh, panache, Brilliant. Yeah. one might say. But that was when you guys had the D-drum set up and all of that it was fucking outrageous. Yeah, yeah, we... we uh definitely messed with more than our fair share of technology and sometimes paid the price for it you know it was a little uh, yeah it was slightly less um stable i think was probably <laughs> the polite way to put it yeah well it probably fits in with the rest of us then at, at <laughs> that point in our career <laughs> it was brilliant show so thank you so much for that and uh, are you guys going to do another series you're going to go back out Oh yeah, yeah. As soon as everything can open back up again, you know, we had a, we did have a bunch of shows booked for, for uh, this year, but obviously. Oh really? Been, yeah, most of them been pushed. There's still some kind of scheduled for the end of the year, but right. nobody really knows what's going to happen yet. So, so we're just going to have to uh, keep an ear out. And and but uh, I would hope, I would think at very least that. Um, uh, end of 2021, beginning of 2022. Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly, be, you know, early 2022, we're all hoping for it. So yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's taken a toll on a bunch of people. It's really bad. Sure has, sure has. What was the what venue were you going to do here? Uh, In don't LA, uh, you didn't know. Uh, no, uh, we haven't got any uh, US stuff booked yet. Most of it's in Europe. Um, ah. so, so uh, well, but, please come know, back. I missed yeah, the we, last dates in LA, so I need you to do a makeup just for me. That my great. hand. Yeah. My hand. We'll, we'll do one for your hand. It's the least you can do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, th thank you so much for all the music and for everything. It's uh, it's, it's, it's brilliant to chat with you. And uh, cool. I will hopefully see you back in the States at the end of the, the this year, beginning of next. Perfect. Be safe, mate. Yeah, you too. All right. So, Bon, if you haven't seen, I'm not sure if you've seen, but Christian does all these breakdowns of songs track by track. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I love him. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, thank right? you. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. He's going to uh, enjoy the silence for us later I'm a, today. I'm a actually. bit of a theory nerd myself. So, you know, I'm always up for a bit of dissection of a track. You know, I, love I would, uh, I would be honored to do a, an ebb track. If I could make a request, it would be uh, Control I'm Here, which is my favorite nice. ebb song of all time. I was going to or, say, like, trying to break down murder as it goes, did a little, did a little, did a little. <laughs> just repeat that for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the other one, though, I think a substantial one to do would uh, would actually become alive would be amazing. That'd be yeah, awesome. that's a good. Yeah, there's so much stuff going on on that one. Yeah. So I don't know if you've ever stemmed. Have you ever stemmed any of your stuff out for, oh, for yeah. any sort of? Yeah. Well, if you need uh, you need any sort of encouragement, I'm sure that this group <laughs> this group would gladly toss you a bunch of encouragement. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that'd be fun. It'll be an honor. So thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going to go and prepare for it. I think we're going to try and do Enjoy the Silence, but I'm telling you right now, the bot is going to shut us down from Blink. it's going to get done. Uh, yeah. It'll be finished. <laughs> it'll be over. Fucking that's it. Yeah. We'll get 10 seconds tops. <laughs> so uh, I will see you all on uh, on Instagram at two. Correct, Rob? Yeah, that's right. All right. See I'll you there. See you, too. Cheers, all right. see you Christian. Be safe, fun. Adios, everybody. Bye. Cheers. Okay. Real quick, Bon, um, what's that thing behind you and how much money does it cost? That is a modular synthesizer. Uh, it varies depending on what you've got in it. Um, but that one is about $7,000, I think. Damn! 7000 Yeah, something like that. 
Is that the yeah. same equipment that's out there in the in the lemon tree videos? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm always very nervous about whether we've turned the sprinklers off on the lawn, you know, because <laughs> you, you wouldn't want to sacrifice your your modular to the sprinkler gods, really, would you? No, absolutely not. And where do you keep your um what's it called? Xylophone? Bi vibraphone. Vibraphone. Yeah, vibes. Yeah, vibes, yeah, right. yeah. I'm in the dining room portion of my house and just about 10 feet yonder is said vibraphone. So I can, I can, you know, tinkle around with it in the, in the lounge whilst I'm, I'm listening to the radio or watching Star Trek. Your house is a musical museum. It pretty much is. And I'm the oldest exhibit. <laughs> 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 okay. So um, sound wise, I think, I think we got a little bit of a, Rob, did you hear it blip out a little bit during the, uh, so one one thing I was going to ask, uh, is it on a? Com are you going through a computer on there at all? Or no, I'm going, but the backing track's coming off an iPad. Oh, okay. Because there's a, a feature that if you're on a computer, I don't know if you could see it on an iPad, but it's like turn off original sound, turn on original sound. Mm. That that alternates between whether we can hear it in stereo or mono. Mm. It's a weird zoom thing, but well, the way I have this set up is I've got everything going into an amp from one. Set. Oh, okay. And cool. then run in a line, a stereo line out from the amp into your feed. Got it. So, um, uh, but uh, yeah, so. Uh, it sounded good, but it just yeah, it it good. dropped. It dropped down to a bit quiet for some reason that we yeah. all never understand. Well, what I'm going to do is probably record some higher fidelity versions of both of these and post them after the fact. So. Because, you know, Zoom's always a bit variable anyway. You can have bandwidth dropouts and all that. So so I had kind of figured that uh, that I would, would post some clean versions of them afterwards. So <laughs> if we have any issues, uh, hopefully it won't spoil the enjoyment of the tracks too much. No, it was no. awesome. It was amazing. Thank you so and, much. Uh, and, I'll, uh, and I'll make sure that I post some, some high fidelity ones without any internet glitches or anything else. No, we appreciate we appreciate everything. It's it's been so great. Yeah. Would would love to hear another track from you if you've got one up your sleeve. I do have one up my sleeve actually. Um, so, uh, so yeah, this one uh, I have a bit of a habit of throwing a track in at the last minute on these on these Depeche Global things, and uh, so this is a bit of a last minute addition, and. Uh, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to dedicate this one to my family, um, to my mum, Gloria, to my brother, Dean, to my sister, Corrine, but most of all, or especially, to my dad, Joe, who, uh, who passed away recently. So uh, this, one's, this one's for my dad.
Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing. Build a man, Bob. What's that? Back. Oh, he's back. So we, we can do the. Uh, I heard the we can we can applaud again. <laughs> yes, we can applaud again. That was, beautiful, that was beautiful, Bond. It was beautiful, Bond. Thank you. Woohoo! Lovely tribute as well. So so sorry for your loss. Absolutely, so sorry for your loss. Somebody's feeding back. Yeah, somebody is feeding back. Yeah. Let me just mute. Some people around and see if it helps. <clears throat> I'm on it. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Me. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> I'm your dad, mate. <laughs> that so, was that. Oh, go ahead, Rob. Go no, ahead. I was going to say. So, <clears throat> you know, today's our anniversary of our drinking chats, which I would have never expected something like to evolve the way it has, but. I want to thank you again for being part of this because it's it's meant a lot to us, you know, for you to take the time out of your day and to do performances and to to share your time with us. We really appreciate it. So uh, I appreciate it too. I, you know, I think Vaughn hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, it's 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 going to be a while yet, I think, before we can all get together. So this is the way to do things, and and um, yeah, it's been it's been really great to come on and and give us all a chance to get together and see each other and, and uh i think you're doing a really really good thing and it, it's uh it's make you know bringing a lot to a lot of people's lives including mine it's really nice to work on the songs and and uh, have something to aim for and, and all that so I, I appreciate you guys having me on thanks so much and we were talking earlier about you you had said a specific drinking word last time that we didn't end up using. We were trying to figure out what that was. Do you remember what you said? It was some crazy word. I don't remember what. Shostakovich. Oh, that's right. That's right. Do you do you have some sort of like bond bond with that that you just remember completely that that's what you uh suggested? It's just a silly name. <laughs> Well, it's not a silly name. Obviously, it's a Russian name, and he's a very famous composer. But it sounds silly when someone from Essex says it. Dostoevsky. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See proof. <laughs> oh, that that was beautiful, though. I was I was uh, thinking about all these songs. How you dedicated this one to your family, and mm. I hear I hear that feedback. By the way, I think it actually might be Rob. No, it might be me because I've got my my, my amp on, so it, it might. Yeah, be. I have my headphones on, so I don't. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right, that's fine. No way. There's no way around that. We're gonna have to have everything. Totally on. fine. Have totally. a little bit of echo. On. That's fine. Um, about how you you choose songs, and I know this one's dedicated to your family, mm. and um, when when it comes to choosing songs that you decide to cover. And this kind of relates to like Martin Gore and his counterfeit work because he he's discussed about why he does certain songs. Do you do you have like a an, an encyclopedia type form of in your head of I've always wanted to do this and I'm going to write it down because it's going to come out as a cover, or is it more spur of the moment? I think it's more a case of you know like in the case of giving it all away my, my brother actually chose that one um as a tribute to my dad and uh uh and we were both discussing it the other day um my brother dean harris the blacksmith in fact um and uh you know we were saying that we both we both loved that track uh, as kids you know and probably forgot about it for a little bit and then there are certain occasions that come up where where, where a song seems to really fit you know um but a lot of it when i'm picking songs are the ones that like probably you know a lot of it's when you are when you are a kid and i don't know you're traveling in the back of the car with your parents or whatever and a certain song comes on and it just hits you you know like really really gets to, to your soul you know and and so that's that's a big a big thing and then you know sort of tracks that were the soundtrack to your life, you know, when pivot of, pivotal events were happening or transformations in your life and songs that were just 
you kind of had on repeat at the time and the songs that just mean so much more than just songs you know they're, they're part of your life and and you know it's very much what the lemon tree was about was was sort of a a collection of the songs that really made a big impact on me early on and, and stayed with me all the way through um and obviously there's some later ones like in episode two of the lemon tree i did a cupcake song and you know again that was a, a pivotal period I'd, I'd moved to la and was flat broke and you know didn't know anyone in town and you know that that song came around just when i'd met some new friends and things were starting to look up you know and 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 for, you know, from a pretty dark time and a pretty, pretty low time, just beginning kind of like we're doing now with the pandemic, just beginning to see little glimmers of perhaps hope and ambition. And, you know, and that, that I got a copy of the demo, the Cupcakes album around that time. And it, it just, well, despite the fact that it's a brilliant album, they're all brilliant musicians and I love Preston's voice. Um, it just fit right in with the time, you know, and it, it really became the soundtrack for that time in my life so so those songs are super important you know speaking of your timeline i know that um certain eras of your life will kind of fit with certain songs mm. i know you've known simon and david when how long how when were when were you, how old were you guys when you met it was a long time ago i think me and dave were 12 when we met and then we met Simon probably when we were about 15 or 16. 15. Really. What kind of songs sit with that era when you think back to them? I mean, a lot of a lot of the early sort of stuff around Chelmsford uh, and, and, and kind of around Dave and I's circle. There's a lot of reggae, you know, a lot of early reggae stuff, um, Trojan records, all that stuff. Uh, you know, glam rock was was always big and was kind of the precursor to punk rock that was to come um you know and and sort of disco funk soul you know uh, all that stuff but we we took our music pretty seriously we all did and it was kind of a big group like dave and i knew each other but my brother dean and david's old brother richard knew each other and my dad joe and and and, and dave's dad ray knew each other so it's like generations of mischief going on there so um but yeah you know so so me and dave weren't running in circles that far away from our older brothers and we we're all into the same stuff all into the same music and it was it was a way of life and we, we did take it very seriously yeah i'm just queuing up some some music here real quick um if anybody has any questions, feel free to to jump in here while I do some admin stuff real quick. So I, I'm gonna, I I have that track by the way that you were talking about it too. So oh yes, oh, okay. Oh okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, but I want to ask Bon. Yeah. So post pandemic, when you don't have, I mean, I don't want anything to detract from Nights of Red plans for sure. Yeah. But I'm just curious: Do you have plans to ever perform on your own post pandemic? Like just as bon harris you know yeah obviously. okay cool yeah That's yeah I'll, I'll see how it, it goes i mean it, it's, it's a little bit tricky because it might not necessarily fit in with the same sort of venues and styles that the ebb does so you, you'd think that like because you know we book pretty big shows with the ebb that it'd be relatively easy to then book shows on my own but it, it doesn't always work like that so i've got to put out the feelers but you know, part of how I designed the lemon tree with just a small setup and doing it with an amp and just a mic and no big production stuff was to prepare for that eventuality. You know, I'd be quite happy to play uh, in the pub garden in Chelmsford or wherever, <laughs> you know. I did, I set it up like that so that it could be done in a coffee shop or, you know, so I didn't have to, I could be flexible and do it wherever I want and, and kind of do it in the garden was a little bit of a, test for that as well where it's like yeah it works and it works in a small space i'm sure it'd work in a big space so so yeah definitely got plans to do that and and you know other the other stuff that i've been working on in the studio kind of like solo or collaborations so so yeah i'd love to love to get out on stage and 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 uh, do that you know i spend so much time when i'm <coughs> in europe on to in chelmsford i'm like 
I might as well put something together where I can actually go and play when I'm sitting there. <laughs> so, so yeah, you know, hot box or, or, or some other venue, you know, I was really kind of looking forward to doing something over there and, and then it all got shut down. So as soon as it starts up again, you know, maybe, maybe my inaugural solo show will be in Chelmsford. That would be fitting. Well, well hopefully you get one over here in LA remember as well. Bonus. Remember, Bonners is really small venues and people don't come running because there ain't a lot of room for everyone to fit in. I, I don't think that's going to be a problem at my solo shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I, think me, I think me, you and Simon will fit in there just fine. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, you'll definitely have our support. We'll, we'll definitely help promote whatever we can in global. So. Brilliant. Oh, absolutely. And we'll, we'll be there when they're local or, you know, if I can get over to England when you have that show, I'll absolutely love to get there as well. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, it'd be yeah. good to do a, a, a global Depeche Mode in Essex event, you know, because really, yes, it's, it's, that's the wellspring of it all. So you Absolutely. Should, you should do a Depeche Mode convention in Basildon. Yeah, I think we definitely need Everyone to was like shocked that. into silence, so that's the question. <laughs> 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 but, but actually, Basildon's sort of coming up in the world again now, so, you know, they might even have a decent venue again. Yeah, see? Good. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple questions. Oh, sorry. Um, Noir Box, lovely to see you. Go ahead with your question. Hello, great to see everyone. Hi, Bon. Hi, Hi. all my friends on here. I have a question. I'm really happy to hear you said you're working on new material. You're going to release new material. That could be any number of things. I guess we'll have to wait to see, but uh, it's been really interesting to see some artists have said their creativity has been totally stifled during this period, and some have seemed to thrive. Martin yeah. Gore and Trent Reznor both said they have no creativity to write new material during this time, like in published interviews. It's very discouraging. We're like, we need new right. material. And yeah. that, that every day is the same, so they're they're not able to come up with new material. So what, what do you feel is encouraging you to be creative? most of it is actually having the time away from other projects you know like a lot of people have said during the lemon tree thing like this is a new side to you that we haven't seen i'm like no it isn't <laughs> it's a side that's been there forever but i'm too busy doing music producing music quite often for other singers you know and the realities are that's what pays the bills you know traveling around so much so it's um, really ironically the pandemic and the fact that i moved to a place with a decent garden you know, I saw the creative opportunity there to do it. So, and there was a lot of stuff that I put on the back burner for a long time. So for me, the pandemic sort of put aside everything else and, and allowed me to focus on a lot of things that I hadn't had time to do it. Um, but, and also, you know, for, for an artist that works at home a lot, the lockdown isn't that much different from being a regular music producer. You know, you're quite often in a room on your own, uh, just trying to come up with stuff. So, so yeah, I just, uh, and, and I think it has kind of what we're talking about earlier. It's sort of focused the online community and people really are finding a new appreciation for events like this, where you can, it's as close as we can get to being social and sharing time. So, um, you know, and that's very accessible for an artist. So, so for me, that was another really good motivation. You know, that all you got to do is come up with some some good material, and you've, you've got literally a global audience that you can just click a button and, and you're there. So, so I've I've found that all very uh, motivating and, and stimulating. Yeah, I, I find that interesting that you said because I I was wondering the same thing. I was like wondering how Martin and Trent's lives could change so much with the pandemic when they're pretty isolated as they are as rock stars, right? I can't, I, I mean, I don't know what they're, what the difference is, but it, think, it seemed I like it made sense when, what you said. I think when you're at that level, so much of it has to do with the perception of an audience, you know, and that there's an audience out there, like every discussion that you have or every discussion that they have, when they're with bands at that level, it's just focused on audience, audience, audience all the time. And I think the removal of that prospect for, for people that operate at that level must be very strange. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of motivation that 
that larger artists are very aware that they have an, 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 a captive audience and an audience waiting for, well, to, in some cases, watching their every move. And I think once that's, uh, once that's taken away, then, uh, you know, I think it's a bit strange for some arts. And I think probably another aspect is, is to a certain degree, we're all discovering what we can do with online and streaming. And I think artists like that, that have got a, a known for having such a high production quality, perhaps the unknown nature of, of how the production values are going to be is, might be a bit daunting, you know. So, so I can understand why, why it might have the opposite effect on some people. Yeah, I guess that would could be attributed as well to the the whole music industry going upside down where now all the money is made on the touring aspect as opposed to the recording. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, it's it's uh one of the many things about a pandemic and a lockdown that's 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 uh led us to all wrestle with our perceptions and preconceived notions of things, you know. We've all had to adapt and, and sort of find another way. Great question. Yeah, Thanks. excellent question. Thank you. Thanks, Kerry. Um, I, there was a question from uh, Andy Zorn. I don't, I don't know if I, what happened. Andy, if you had a question, go Andy, ahead. You're still there? No, oh, it's uh, it, it's fine. I just, uh, um, I run a club in Regensburg, and I just wanted to offer if you ever need a place in between Munich and I don't know Vienna. Um, um, I will gladly have you there. It's a oh, very small venue, but I'm a very small person. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's an excellent offer. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Food head, are you here? Where is he? Where is he? Hello, guys. Hello. Yay! Oh, there he is. I'm on my phone and on my computer, on my TV. You are. So, you have to, you have to turn the volume down on one of them because otherwise we're going to get feedback. Yeah, I turned off the TV sound. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, I, how are you? How is everybody? Nice to see you again. Yeah. Can we see you? Do you want to turn on your camera or you, or you can't? I don't have on. the camera. I have on my phone thing, but I'm not. Oh, okay. I'm not the most technical guy actually. Food I'm more head. of a food guy. He's a he's a cook. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, very good one too. No, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, no, I just wanted to ask about the releases. Are, are, yeah. Isn't it time to do more of a like a cassette releases? Uh, is, it? is it? I think you tell yeah. me. Yeah. No, really I don't think the, many people on the buy cassettes. cassettes. World. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean they're all they're, they're, they're a funny little sort of package. They're, they're quite exactly. neat to have, but um, you know they're, they're not so good in terms of sound quality and, and uh yeah i wouldn't even know about you know who would do cassette duplication i mean i know it's become a bit trendy again so i'm sure there are places re-emerging that will duplicate cassettes for you but honestly no i have i have not thought of that no. and how, how's the black line project getting along uh are you done up in montana uh, well, again, yeah, we're done working in Montana. Again, it's tough, you know, during the pandemic, trying to get everyone together. Yeah. So so it's just, you know, we'll get back to that as and when. But Douglas, myself and Brad Apodaca um, are based in L.A. So we've been working on a few things together, um, mm. so sort of like a sort of a splinter off of off of Black Line. And we've got an EP in the works and uh, four, four songs that we're really happy with, actually really excited about and uh writing new stuff for that so um yeah it's part of my problem actually is i'm trying to do more get the old lemon tree stuff done for an album working on new lemon tree stuff working on another couple of solo eps and working on an ep with with uh with drag which is douglas brad and myself so you know too many projects for one uh, diminutive uh essex boy <laughs> uh, sounds good sounds good good that you have some stuff to do plenty of stuff to do the the the, the list of long-term projects is uh well i don't want to think about it it's really long no that's good yeah, okay it is. nice to see you guys again yeah, yeah. Nice good to job you, with the songs I'm sorry yeah. for your loss yeah thank you i hope to see yeah. you soon man yeah yeah yeah. you'll be in sweden soon remember yeah, so we'll, yeah. <laughs> okay hey, Take Bob, care. That, le that leads me to a question so mm. 
you know, we kind of, a lot of us associate you and Doug as Knights of Reb. I mean, obviously now David and Simon and we, you know, there's been other components, Julian, et cetera, but yeah. what, what makes you determine, <clears throat> I would think when you have a brand like that, that you, you've already established, it would be easier for you to continue to use that name instead of like these different side projects when it's you and Doug in black line or in drag or whatever. Um, I'm just curious well, what, well, I think the thing is, it's, you know, I don't like marketing speak and all that, but you know, it, it is a brand and, and it's known for a certain thing. And I think, um, at this point it's been established for so long. Uh, I think it's, it's good to, to kind of keep nights or ebb as nights or ebb and, uh, uh, um, you know, if we're going to experiment with, with other musical things that are in a slightly different style, um, then it's better to do it outside and independently. So I think, you know, there's such a sort of stylistic template for Knights of Ebb that there's really only one way you can go with that. There's a limited window with what you can do because there's so much history, so much precedent and a lot of expectation of fans you know some fans have been with it from the beginning some are really young and have only just come to it so some of them are only just catching up on the first couple of albums so you sort of have got somewhat narrow parameters um to work within um and uh rather than trying to constantly have one band try and be all things to all people it just makes more sense that if we feel like we're going to do something that's not exactly fitting in with the ebb sort of template then it's good to do it on your own i think it's also good as an artist to just stand on your own and not you know it's good to have a group that you're part of and that, that, that you that you're part of building but it's also good to sort of stand up and show your own identity and yeah be willing to go and play a club on your own with only five people in it you know just because that's what you believe in i think that sort of takes you back to your roots and keeps you honest and it's also nice if you've got an alternative to play to 10 people on one on one night on your own and then go and play to you know 2000 the next night and in, in something like the ebb so it's just a case of organization really and and identifying with what's appropriate for which project to so that the project maintains its identity and its integrity thanks makes sense yeah Awesome. I've Not got financial a... sense, I might add. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because I, uh, it, the, a case in point, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Electrofiction, was like a side project with Will Sargent and Ian McCulloch from Echo and the Bunnymen. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they toured with that and it was phenomenal. But and yeah. it was a little divergent from the Bunnymen as far as because they hardened the sound a little bit because at that point yeah. it was kind of grunge was big and but yeah. it still had that real bunny men kind of feel. And yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have thought, Oh, this is, doesn't sound like the bunny men if, if they released it as the bunny men, but um, they ended up yeah, going you're, back you're to the probably, bunny men. You're probably one of the more forgiving, open-minded fans out there though, Rob, you know, there, there are some, <laughs> there are some that are just like, if you deviate even, I mean, I don't know if I told this story before, but I was at a club once and it, I think it was in, in Dresden after a show you know we'd done a show and we went out to the bar and had a few drinks with whatever fans were, were still there and some bloke came, industrial bloke you know with the sort of three-quarter length trousers and 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 the, and the combat vest came up and started poking him at me in the chest because i'd worn a blue suit on the on the cover of oh, for the photo shoot for big hit and he was really upset because i wasn't wearing black shorts and a white <laughs> vest he's poking me in the chest and he's like you are not my Bon Harris. You are not my Bon Harris. And wow. I said to him, I said, I'm 48 years old, mate. I'm not my fucking Bon Harris anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but you wouldn't want to see me in a pair of shorts. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, some people have got very set ideas. You know, and it's funny. an interesting psychology at a certain point. Like, so, you know, um, the mode must see this all the time where you get fans that are just so sort of into it that your personality becomes their property. You know what I mean? It's like, if you don't do what their image of you is, it's unacceptable, you know? <laughs> we, we, won't, we won't even mention Alan Wilder. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yay, fanboy alert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. 
So yeah, it's funny. It's quite funny. And worrying uh. sometimes. <laughs> 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 oh, next question uh, from Gatis of the Julia and Gatis fame. Are you here? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hi. We are. Hi. Hi. How are you guys? Very good. Happy the happy anniversary, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> I got I got a question to to Bon uh, yeah. regarding uh, one, uh, it's a quick uh, quick question and then. Maybe a one more serious question. So I I got the CD yeah. from yeah. Julia. So she bought me uh, last year when she was in uh, Madrid. In Madrid, yeah, during Madrid. your show. So yeah. with your autographs, and yeah. uh, I I wanted to ask if uh, if uh, Pylon Records is your own label. No, no, this is a friend of ours, um, Peter Black. That's his label, and it's kind of. You know, he does a lot of legacy sort of releases, so he goes and gets the rights to, to older records. He did, I, I, and does a lot of lovely box sets. You know, he did, did a really beautiful one for DAF, actually, some some really rare. Oh, really? Stuff. Recently? For DAF. Uh, a couple of years ago, he did the DAF one. So he does a lot of box sets and stuff like that. And he's, you know, he takes, I, uh, a, lot of, takes a lot of care on the packaging and, and, and does a really good job. Perfect. Them, so. so I'd like to order some. I'd like to order uh, the back catalog of Nights Reb and also mm. DAF. Is it? Yeah. Uh, do you think it's still available? Yeah, Peter did do box sets. He did a Nights Reb box set, and he did and he did a DAF box set. So contact Pylon, and they might still have some. Oh, okay. So what's his name? Peter Black. Peter Black. So all mm. right. And uh, uh, important question that everybody wants to know: When can we expect the next night's rap record? <laughs> well, <laughs> and you can maybe during this uh, pandemic time, you guys can get together, have some ideas. You know, uh, it's a bit difficult getting together because two of us are in Los Angeles and two are in Chelmsford, so so it's a bit of an issue. Um, there's a bunch of other projects. You know, Doug and I were discussing this the other day. You know, there's there's a lot of things that we want to do before we would get back into to doing more Knights of Reb stuff. So the more likely thing is for, for us to all get together and, and kind of reinterpret some of the existing tracks, um, maybe do some extended versions, and, you know, with new sections. We've talked about that a lot. So if there was to be new Knights of Reb stuff, it, it would probably be go back to the catalogue and do some interesting sort of variations mm -hmm. on, on the existing stuff. Which, I think that's sort of interesting. Have you guys, have, sorry, have you guys considered just exchanging uh, the uh, tracks uh, like uh, via email or something like uh, Martin did with Vince? Uh, uh, there's there's, there's a lot of ways of doing it, but I think it's, you know, kind of like we were talking about just a minute ago, you know, in, in, in terms of Douglas was talking to Daniel Miller recently and, and Daniel, as he does, like half serious, half joking, was like, oh, you know, got to do a new Ebb album, got to do a new Ebb album. It's got to all be 150 BPM, you know, and it's, it's like, and it's that sort of thing where it's like, yeah, well, when I was 20, you know, 150 BPM and stomping around and shouting at the top of my voice, that was an accurate reflection of where I was at. But it wouldn't be now. I mean, it is on some days, but most days it isn't. So I think as a as a creative person, you've got to keep going with your own personal development because that's how it stays. Uh, you keep the emotional intensity that way if it, if it means something to you and reflects who you are and where you're at, which isn't to say that the ebb doesn't, but a lot of a lot of those emotions and energies, um, you know, were, were, were what I was feeling when I was 20 years old. And so maybe, and I used to feel that, you know, when I was 20, I used to get up and the, the type of music you hear on early Ebb albums, that's all I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to make. Whereas now it's like once in a while I'm in the mood for something raucous and loud and Ebb-like, but yeah. I'm also in the mood for, you know, there's a lot of other things I can do and a lot of things I want to explore. So the amount of times I'm in the mood for the Ebb stuff is is smaller so, uh, you know, you just collect up all those ideas and do them at once. Plus we tour a lot, you know, so that whole, the whole sort of desire to do the ebb thing and have all the energy and the speed and the power, we, we get satisfied with that from touring. 
you know so kind of when you get off the road you, when you're in the studio again you, you kind of feel like exploring some other musical things and some other emotions you know thank you thank yeah, you thank you yeah cheers wonderful uh, at this time i'd like to make a quick shout out because um Simon and David are here as well, but yeah. Nadia, Nadia, are you here? I, I'd like to say happy birthday. It's in a couple days, but Nadia, I want to say happy birthday to you. Are you here? Hey, <laughs> hey. I'd like to all, um, we could all toast to, to Nadia. Yeah, She's good. an excellent photographer. You should see some of her, her beautiful photos at Morganistic all over the place. And Aww. she's just excellent. Really, really excellent. Happy birthday to you. Happy Thank birthday, you. Nadia. Happy birthday, Nadia. Thank you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, gorgeous. What was the, the drinking word? Violator. There, there's violator and gumption and hammer. We have multiple Gosh, words since Kovic. it's a, a Happy celebration birthday. today. <laughs> That's the COVID. Yeah, and, 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 and Bond's word, which I still don't know Happy that I can birthday. pronounce. Happy birthday. Jostakovich, go for it. <laughs> what is it? Jostakovich? Jostakovich. Jostakovich. Famous Russian uh, composer. Well, my favorite album is Violator, so. Yay. <laughs> Happy birthday from the darkest star. Thank you, Larry. Happy birthday, darling. Thanks, Dave. So, speaking of Simon and David, well, should we play that track? The the one that I oh, came across. The I'd other? love to. It's such a great track. Why don't we give a bit of an introduction from the from the boys' side yeah, of it? Exactly. So, have you told them about the track then? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, Stark featuring Knights Ebb. Fall in love with me. Did I just did I just hear the alarm? Oh. <laughs> Yes, hmm. that's that I, I don't know part. if the Ducks scored a goal or if it's just going off randomly. <laughs> or if Alan Wilder's in the it's building. Go, it's going off because it's such a great track. I think that's why it went off. <laughs> it is. It's such a great track. So if you guys, if uh, Simon, uh, I think David walked a bit away, but uh, Bon, if you'd like to int introduce the uh, Fall in Love With Me and then we'll play it. It's a gorgeous track. Well, actually, I think Simon could take that one away. He's, he's uh, cool. Okay. Um. It's, it's probably Iggy Pop, that alarm going off. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I, I've always wanted to do a cover version like for ages. And then, I mean, I, I kept nagging Dave to do Fall in Love With Me by Iggy. And we used to listen to it every week and couldn't work out how to do it, basically. And then one one time Bond was over, we asked, asked Bond just to play the keyboard parts because we couldn't do it. So he did, and then he went off again. So we were left with this little keyboard part, and we kept coming back to it and trying it, and we, we couldn't, we didn't spend enough time on it really. And we kept having a little go, and he gave up. And and it all stems from a friend of ours, um, because when we were all young, um, which was a long time ago, there was a good friend of ours called Donald, who was a little bit older, and he was um, a complete Iggy fan. It 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 bring records around mine and say. You're going to listen to this, not would you like to listen to this? It was like you're going to listen to this, and it it just play the Iggy and the Stooges, and then it it bring round every solo Iggy pop record, and that's how I got to like Iggy because Donald forced me to listen to it. Um, so time went on, and Donald knew we were doing an Iggy cover version, but I didn't tell him which one it was, um, because we wanted to make sure it was right before he heard it. Uh, but in parallel to that, Donald got ill; he he got cancer. Um, so by the time we we got the track kind of finished, Donald passed away. So he never knew which track we were going to do. So we thought as a kind of a tribute to Donald that we'd finish the track properly, we'd do it properly. And Bomb was around and Douglas were both in the UK. So, and a friend of ours called David R. Scott, who we'd known for a long time, he was a, a vocalist on one side and Bon and Doug were the vocalists on the other. So we just created the track and we got it done pretty quickly in the end. So it's kind of, a, it's a tribute for Donald and, and, the, and the money that, uh, this came out on Pylon Records as well. It's, I think it's probably still available, I'm not sure. But the money for that goes to Cancer Research UK. Um, it's, it was, 
I gotta say, it was Simon's idea. Always, Simon drove me to do this, to do this song, to produce this song, uh, and obviously having the option with Bon and Douglas to be around. We and at the time, it became really beautiful time to do this song with Donald's passing. Um, I'm very proud of it. it you know, we're really thankful for to Peter Black for putting it out. Um, and I think Simon for doing the artwork. If anybody actually finds the record, if you look in detail at the sleeve, you will find some amazing detail in there. You need to look quite hard and very deep because uh, Simon's put kind of hidden message in there somewhere. But it's a uh, much of a dedication to a very dear old friend who passed. Mm. There's uh, inside the sleeve. There's a a little flyer that comes with it that explains who Donald was and what he was like and what he meant to Knights of Reb. So it's. Uh, yeah, it's something we're all proud of. And the funny thing is, it, it, yeah, there it is. <laughs> it was actually on sale in Rough Trade Records and it, and it said um, sold out. I was saying to a Tuza the other day, it's probably like one of six copies they had in. <laughs> <laughs> Literally several people stampeded the fight. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> Without yeah, further ado, here's the song. All right.
young and pure You're young at heart You're young at heart A bottle of white wine And that was awesome. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Awesome. So yeah. awesome. I love it. Excellent. Excellent. That was amazing. Excellent. That's the production genius of Mr. Gooday there. Well done, Mr. Gooday. That was excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Try my hardest. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny because Bond mentioned about nights are, you know, a particular sound. So that's why the branding. But I also noticed when david performed when you guys performed last time you have that that night survive sound that you you have that as well like but it's such a clearly unique sound to you all of you guys like it's not like you don't hear other artists with that sound but so it is strictly a defined sound and it's a, a brilliant sound definitely love it well, thank you very much <laughs> appreciate that yeah, i I, might, I was you might not I say that when you hear the next one. <laughs> a lot of that does come from a, a, a joint uh, love of minimalism, Rob. You know, we're, <laughs> Very we're, true. we're all fairly into a, a minimal stuff. Well, at least when we're in that sort of creating mindset for that type of track. So, yeah, less is definitely more uh, when, yeah. when, we, when we all get together in Chelmsford. Unless you're talking about beer and curry. <laughs> well it also feels like there's a specific like almost like an analog with like the specific beats and the delays like just some sort of combination that's pretty unique the way it's done i i, I can't i don't know if that explains it well but it's a groove just the vibe thing. yeah that groove that groove that it's you have it's very thing. unique yeah it's an yeah. Essex I, I, I think the groove a lot of time is is what bond said earlier it's what we grew up with so you, you don't lose what you what taught you music or gave you the feeling so anything that's funky anything that has that driving feeling that's what you add to it you know and at the same time you're you're trying to make it as musical as possible and as minimal for us as possible because <laughs> less is always more yeah yeah the, the groove thing definitely is kind of imprinted in our dna at this point you know every, everything that we've listened to or most things that we've listened to from a very young age you know has has a sort of groove and uh you know the, certain certain rhythm rhythmic aspect to it, it's always important so i think that always just comes out subconsciously you know well for for oh my my alarm keeps yeah. going off now i don't yeah. know what i did yeah. <laughs> it's the great music today. It, it is, I guess. It's a celebration alarm. Um, Rob, was it the Sharks score just? No, no, that that alarm only goes off when the Anaheim Ducks score. So, <laughs> remember Sharks? <laughs> yeah, I know you're a Sharks fan, but it's funny because that is actually tied over Wi-Fi to whenever uh, the Ducks score a goal, it actually goes off. But they're not playing until five o'clock, so. I think because I hit the test button to to send it off earlier, that's what started it. But and, and I want to, as we said, we welcome David and and Simon and and even Nadia, who's we're celebrating your birthday as well. But um, 
if anyone has questions for for them as well, you know, we can add, add a cue. So um, just wanted to welcome them. I mean, officially, they've been on with us, thankfully, but um, just throwing it out there for everybody. I'd also like to see if I could squeeze a track out of Mr. Gooday. That's feasible. We can we can do something if you'd like. You want me to do something? I'd love it. We'd all love it, actually. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to do no. it. <laughs> no, I, I guess you say no. I'm going to have a little jig around in the cameras and things, so then you get to see some stuff. And I'll turn my microphone off in here because else it's going to go do lally. And hopefully it'll sound okay. Uh, let's see where we go with this. So, there, yeah, there's the equipment. I'll uh, just dip my mixer because else it's going to sound awful for you guys. Holy oh, shit. A lot of fucking wires.
We're going to be way back. There you go. Woo! Woohoo! Yeah! Very cool. That was awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Off, off the cuff. Oh, good. Yeah, that's totally nice. off the cuff. That's a word yeah. we're to do. <laughs> good. That was awesome. We're admiring, we're admiring I your out. rig, too. Huh? Some of us tech geeks are admiring your rig. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah we kind of, you become a, bit of a, become a bit of a gear junkie in the end, you know, trying to find things that work and do what you need to do. Totally. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I had a question from um, Mark from the last song for Fall in Love With Me. He was asking where he could purchase the vinyl, if possible. Um, that's back on. That's the same. It's Pylon. If you look it up, it'll come up on Pylon Records. Awesome. awesome. There you it go, a, Mark. It, it was only it's released also on, on Pylon the eBay site, actually. Mm. Yeah, I think it was only only released on vinyl. Mm. Yeah, there is a digital version, I think, somewhere. It's a bit of feedback going on. Yeah, I think, I, think you might have a, I think you might have a synth droning there, Dave. Is the one still rolling? It's difficult to tell, isn't it? Yeah. Be, no, it should just be me. It might be my feedback. Bring the mic down a bit and see where it goes. Is that better? No. No. Oh, it's still a horrible noise. I can't hear Jack here, so. <laughs> Who knows? It sounds like it's coming from your rig. Can you've got a master volume on your on your rig? Yeah, no, don't be silly. That's uh. a silly question, isn't it? Got a thousand bloody master volumes. Silly. No, everything should be good. Is it still making funny noises? It is. Yes. Oh, uh, that's it. That's, that's got it. Oh, that's it. Right. That's the uh, that that'd be the interjunk catching up. I think. I actually had a question from Fabon. Um, do you know Do you know who Beavis and Butthead is? Because they reacted to two Netherrest. Do I know who who is? Sorry. Be Beavis and Butthead. Oh, they, yeah. They, yeah, they reacted to two of your two of your music videos. Um, fun Fun to be had and Godhead. Yeah. 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 How did you feel when when they were like doing their own commentary on your videos? It was pretty funny, you know. Beavis and Butthead were a bit of a thing at the time, and and so it's, you know, it's sort of a uh, somewhat of a of an honour to be included in it, and 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 have so they were they were pretty kind to us, as I remember, because they weren't kind to any other band. Uh, or, yeah. But by the way, um, Nero Box, here is my violator rose to you. All right. You know what, Bond? One of the one of the really nice things I I always well it was amazing it was the 2000 AD when they did the cartoon. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. There's a few moments with Frasher, with Frasher magazine, the skateboard magazine, and like 2008 AD with some of the stuff that you know we grew up with and loved, and then you know you ended up being part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, milestone moments when you end up appearing in a comic book that you collected as a kid. You know, it's good stuff. That was awesome, you guys. Is, is there any um, plan for a new Stark release? Um, I've literally been recording continuously through this horrendous time. Um, very difficult because Simon's not here, so I don't have my partner in crime to stop me which is what he does. He slows me down. Um, so mo I've literally, I've recorded probably 50 tracks um, and I don't really like any of them because he's not here to judge and tell me what's right and wrong because um, it's how our, how our system works. You know, Simon is my, my partner to bounce off. Um, the stuff I've just played you or the one track I've just played you is literally something I wrote last week because um, I've had to go in a different line. As you were talking about earlier in, you know, this lockdown is difficult for people. At times I found it really productive. At the same time, I found it really negative. It's like I don't want to go near anything because I haven't got a, a, a goal. I've got nowhere to go to. I've got nothing to challenge me. I've got no gigs coming up. I've got nothing to work towards. So it, it is quite quite a strain. But And I have to keep saying to myself, you've got to keep working. Then do something different. Do something new. Do something that you wouldn't do before you know <clears throat> so
So Simon, when he's referring to you as stopping him, is that something that you kind of do after the track's already finished or are you somebody who's guiding guiding the, the tracks while they're being created? Oh, you're muted, by the way, Simon. Right. <laughs> I'll say that again. Um, it, it's while the tracks are being being created. So, well, I mean, Dave said he's got fifty tracks. That means there's probably about two hundred and fifty, <laughs> because um, each one will have like a number of tracks in it. So we can probably get five tracks out of one of them easily. So I just break it down into the bits I like, and then we work on the bits we both like, and then they usually become something else. Yeah. So yeah, it's part of the process. It's not at the end. It's at the beginning, if anything. Yeah. Nice. Um, before I possibly squeeze one more track out of David, I want to talk about a couple other things. Um, talk to me about, because I know, I know, Simon, you, you do a lot of the uh, design work. You've done tons of design work for NITA, where uh, you've been working on some of the design work for the Lemon Tree for Bonn, um, hmm. and that you are actually doing some stuff for Bonn's microfunk, which actually includes David's daughter. So you guys yeah. tell us about that because that's exciting, something new that we haven't heard of. I think that's over to Bon, that one, really, on the music side. Yeah, um, Microfunk was kind of the, uh, the precursor to, um, to the Lemon Tree. And one of the reasons why I started doing the Lemon Tree was to sort of pave the way for the Microfunk stuff because I wanted to sing more and uh, had the idea to do some shows. So... I thought that doing some cover versions would be a good way to break me back into to singing and, and arranging and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but microfunk actually is so basically what it was, I, you know, I sketch a lot of music and I kept coming up with these ideas that were sort of vaguely reminiscent of 1970s funk music. I mean, they're all made on a modular and they sound very electronic, but they kind of sounded funky as well. So I had the idea to add some horns and, and, um, and I wanted to sort of collaborate with a with a female vocalist, and and I'd heard Dave's daughter, um, you know, just she's got a very harmonic speaking voice, and and uh, and I've heard her kind of singing, you know, as she, you know, she used to work in a couple of restaurants in Chelmsford, so I'd hear her kind of singing along to the tracks as she was going about her business, and I knew she had a good voice, you know, so I wanted to I wanted to get her in on the track, so. Uh, I flew her out to Budapest um, in 2019 just to just to see what we could do, and we did a cover version there, and she did an amazing job. You know, she's she's, she's got a really lovely voice, and so um, so I had several other tracks that that were sort of percolating, and uh, just recently, you know, kind of the lemon tree got a bit more momentum than I'd anticipated, and. It sort of delayed the micro funk development, but that's kind of what I did as soon as I'd finished episode three of the Lemon Tree. I, I was determined to focus again on on the micro funk stuff and, and develop the tracks, and uh, so that's what I've done. So I'm I'm pretty close to uh, having a four track EP uh, ready to go with that, and uh, you know it's kind of my template now is to do a series of four track EPs probably do live versions of them from under the lemon tree, release the four track EPs and then maybe do a series of three of those. So it'll be like 12 tracks and perhaps do an additional couple of bonus ones and collect them as an album. So, um, I'm adding ideas to that all the time. Um, and, uh, I always, you know, I send stuff to Dave and Simon just because we are so sort of in tune on, on what's good or, or in some cases you know if it's more like dance music or stuff like that it's like I'm, I'm not necessarily in tune with that scene anymore so they kind of advise me on what they think sounds good and that's always a good bellwether for me is if they like it then then uh, then I know I'm on to something and uh, yeah I, I, I sent a couple of the micro funk tracks over and played a couple of the micro funk tracks and it got the thumbs up you know so um, so we're getting close on that and then Obviously, Simon is always a first choice for me on on any kind of design because, um, you know, because it's 
if the music that I'm sending him is, is something that I, I want to hear his response on, then normally in my mind's eye that I've, I've got his, his graphic sensibility attached to it in some way. So I'm lucky enough on both the lemon tree and on microfunk that Simon's into it and, and, and wants to do it. So, uh, you know, that kind of completes the package for me if, if it's got Simon's graphic work on it. Yeah, Simon's graphic work is really, really very good. I mean, it always has been, but as of late, you can just tell it's really professional, really crisp, and I think it's excellent. Well done, Simon. I'm really curious, curious because, because I don't know what microfunk funk is going to sound like, so when it comes to something like that, which might be a bit um, groovy like that, do, Simon, do you, have, do, you have, uh, do you listen to this stuff and then that helps you design as well uh, i actually just design in my head all the time mm. um i don't need to be on a computer or listening to music or anything i, I know that the feel that bond wants i mean for lemon tree um the idea was like a a classic blue note kind of jazz cover almost um so th the idea there is to to make it look a bit more timeless so it doesn't look like it's anything from a particular era and again it would look like it had been potentially produced i don't know in the 50s or 60s um but it's just been done with new newer techniques but yeah i don't need a computer or i just design in my mind i can actually see fonts in my mind and i can scroll through typefaces it's weird um but i only ever really need you are weird yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i only really need futura or helvetica you know you don't need much else <laughs> that's a good skill to have i remember your email address was actually a font when i was looking at it i'm like oh my god uh, yeah if it's your extra back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, can't, he can't help himself no nah. it's a good way to be though absolutely some people see visions simon sees font <laughs> <laughs> hey as long as Quite long sad, as it's really. As long as it's not Comic Sans, you're okay with me. No, 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 that that is, yeah. <laughs> he, he's, very, he's very adamant about what he doesn't like. You've got to remember yeah, that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah Comic Sans is no good to anyone. Thank you. Thank you. As long as you don't see dead fonts. <laughs> see them everywhere. <laughs> David, would you like to play one more track? Another one? Oh, okay, well, I can go there. Hang on a minute. Yeah, can it have a horrible buzzing noise going through it as well? <laughs> um, yeah, I, worked out, I worked out what it was at the end, so get stuffed. Okay. Uh, hang on, let's just flip over and see where we are. Hey, God, you, we're trying this thing, aren't we? Hang on, let me just go down and... Is that part of the song? <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, they're Long all intro. buzzing songs, anyway. S Simon, I think, I think you were his uh, sound check, so um, I him. <laughs> The sound check was fine. I am just thought I'd mention. There was no Joking. no ad adverse noises. <laughs> I'm joking with you. I know, I know. There, there was less noise on the 433 thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which that was interesting, actually. I saw that rec the Knights of Rev version recently. Yeah. W were, were you guys in y your backyard in the lemon tree? No, we were we were at a friend's house over in um, Echo Park, and uh, yeah, uh, it's got a really good um, vantage point for the sunset, which we wanted to capture. So uh, yeah, that was nice. So we're standing around like a pair of clods, you know, <laughs> silently, being all pretentious, you know. Do you, do you want to explain for people who may not know what that is all about for the people on the call? Uh, yeah, 433 is a, a composition, uh, John Cage. Um, a, a composition is a, in inverted commas. So so it's basically essentially silence. So he would take the stage and, and, and not do anything. But the, the composition is the kind of ambient sound that just happens in that four and it's timed exactly four minutes and 33 seconds. So, so he would do, you know, perform it in concert halls and go on stage and just sit there for four minutes and 33 seconds. And, uh, and whatever noises happened, that was the composition. And, uh, so, um, mute did a collection of all, you know, mute artists contributed their version of four minutes and 33 seconds. And, uh, yeah, and uh, Doug and I, in characteristic fashion, were late 
uh, delivering ours because we were actually traveling in our defense. So we, we had to pull something together really quick. But there's some amazing versions of it. Leibach did an exceptional video uh, version of it. It was really good. So it was fun. It was really nice to contribute to it. Very cool. Thank you. David is on mute. I don't know if he if he's aware. David. And there we okay.
Nice. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Yeah. Stop stealing my lines, Rob. <laughs> Larry, you, you we were expecting you to dance a little more. <clears throat> I think you're on a Kool-Aid come down. <laughs> Now, now I'm, I'm still going to drink more Kool-Aid. S- soon I'm going to have to go into Kool-Aid rehab. <laughs> I can come back in now. Can you hear me now? Am yeah, we, we hear you. That's cool. Thank you very much. That was great. That Thank was you very much. Nice one. Ooh, thank you. Yeah, it's superb. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I want to thank you guys again for joining us. As I'm going to mute you for a second, David, because you're you're feeding go, back go, for go, some go, reason. Go, go, yeah, feedback. Go do it. Do it. Do it. I'm just um, absolutely want to thank you so much for joining us because, you know, uh, this is our one year anniversary, and and you guys were some of the major highlights during this whole crazy thing. So, absolutely, thank you for for helping us celebrate the day. So I wanted to say cheers to you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Cheers. Cheers to you too. Cheers, you guys, and hopefully you'll you'll join us again, no matter which way the lockdown, the pandemic goes. That we'll still be we'll still be doing this, and we'd love to always have you back for a- any time. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, and congratulations on your year. Thank Being you. Online. And, yeah. and we plan to when things are back to normal, you'll have our full support to go see you guys at shows and anything we can do to help promote you. Whatever we can do, let us know. So. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool. Um, Bond does his lemon tree thing and we do a home gig. It'd be really cool to stream it through your site. Oh, oh that'd be amazing. Love that. Love that. Absolutely. Mm, that's that's, good that's a good name. We, uh, we owe anyone a big debt if, if they introduce the concept of the mute button for David. <laughs> we've, 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 we've all been it, trying to. <laughs> <laughs> we've been trying to meet hey, David down the. Off, down the my own 
<laughs> Von, Von, this is why we love Zoom. We can actually mute each other, so it's great. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and we even have dedicated muters. I've, yeah. got two mute, I've got two mutes here now. I've got one on my mixer and one on the bloody screen, so happy yeah, days for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> And my so, so gone to sleep. back back to <laughs> speaking about mute. You mentioned. Uh, oh, well, I'm going to mute you again, David, but uh, because we're feeding back. But you did the 433 thing. Were you still on mute records at the time, or it was just more of a? No, it's it's more like a courtesy thing from mute of like artists that have been on mute and and you know a collection of of you know past and present new artists so you know it's nice of them to include us in that and, and uh you know obviously they highly regard our silence so uh <laughs> they think it's some of our finest work so uh yeah there was good <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, that is interesting i won't i won't get into the details of that but it, obviously you still have a great relationship with daniel miller though so yeah yeah um, yeah. That's cool. That's very cool. It was his his birthday recently, and and uh, you know several of us were contacted to to contribute a little video clip, and so I did a a highly mutated version of of Happy Birthday on this module. Oh, nice. And so uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it, it, he's brilliant, and it's it's always good to see him. You know, he's, when he comes to shows, it's always just uh just a good thing you know even though we're not we don't still work together in a, in a professional capacity we've, we've all just remained good friends and he still loves the ebb you know he's, he's there's, there's a special place in his heart for the ebb you can tell he's kind of uh he's got a bit of a parental proudness about it all which is, <laughs> it's lovely to see actually you know as he should yeah you get, it's we're thankful to him for bringing you to us so yeah we we certainly are and and you know uh, all the other things obviously oh absolutely every everything that we're doing here today is pretty much down to daniel and his vision so uh, absolutely yeah, yeah, to very that. underrated person in the history of music yeah he is yeah and, and that's just kind of his personality as well he's a very understated very modest person and, and uh just uh a big champion of the arts and, and culture in general and, and does a lot of stuff behind the scenes to to make a lot of really cool things possible that might not be otherwise so yeah we've we've always got time for daniel over here he's a, he's a lovely fella well again i want to thank you so much all of you for joining us and as atusa mentioned we'd love to have you back any 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 points and we are going to continue even as as things open up we'll have different events like maybe once or twice a month but um it'd be great to see you guys again and and we're gonna migrate over to christian hand is on instagram I'm gonna break down enjoy the silence hopefully it's not as accurate as he says where the bots shut him down in like 10 minutes but or 10 seconds but we'll, we'll see what happens. you can feel so, free to stay with uh, us and watch the show because we're going to stream it here yes we'd love to have you on if you you, know, you want to stick around but um it's entirely up to you if you'd like to. Some food in a <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need <laughs> All right, you guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I, I will come back if uh, if if I get Mid done. Middle of the evening here. Absolutely. Yes, mm, you absolutely. Guys come. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank guys. You. So much love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.